Hello everyone, this is Jenkins Platform SIG D7-2 2022. Today we have Mark Waite, Stefan Mel, and Damien Duportal. Welcome. We have quite a few items in the agenda, so I won't maybe do the agenda of the agenda, but we have a few open action items to start with. And once in a while, something progresses uh, for the benefit of everybody. And today we have such a thing with Mark. The support page for web containers, similar to Windows and Linux support pages, was something you agreed to do, I think, but uh, or somebody had to do it. And fortunately, Basil Crow did it, and it's already online, up and running. We can see it on Jenkins.io. Right. Yeah. And thanks to Basil very, very much. Uh, that was a long running thing. Not only did he add this page, he also added two automated tests that check that. So we have lots of automated tests that check that level one servlet container works. But he added two automated tests, one to check that the Tomcat 9 uh, servlet at level two continues to work, at least minimally, and one for Wildfly 26 that it continues to work. So what used to be JBoss. Uh, so we've got automation now in the packaging repository that checks level one very heavily and checks level two, at least with a basic check to be sure that things start and, and are reasonably behaved at startup. That's super cool. It's even better than what we expected. So yeah, <laughs> congrats, Basil, once more, great work. That's cool. So one thing that we'll be able to remove from the agenda next time. That's super cool. Debian, now, um, sorry about that. Did you? I know already the answer, but uh, you get time to check on the Docker image download statistic per platform or version. So not in detail yet, uh, but the action we did uh, since last time is that we check for Arc Linux at least. Yeah. Uh, because we have Jenkins slash agents or Linux uh, declination, declination uh, we weren't sure if it was used or not. But no one volunteered to uh, to help or uh, since one year, one year and a half to help on this one. It was never published as the inbound agent. So that means either people are using it and they don't require the inbound agent script or they use that image differently, or no one use it. And the statistic we saw show that there is almost no usage of that image at all. The download, uh, the pool downloads, at least in the past three months, are yeah less than 20 compared to the... Several millions, yeah. <laughs> yes, several millions of the, of the agents. So uh, that one will be a way to remove on the agents. Uh, that, that would be an argument to say, okay, for now, we don't remove it. Um, I'm not sure, though, how to communicate that, because if anyone come back and complains about, uh, I need our Linux, then that means we have at least one person using it. And for the case of the agents, for me, it's a good reason for adding more and more. I, uh, I Please don't, don't quote me for the controller image, which is another topic. Uh, but sure. for the agent, for me, uh, people need to inst install their tools. So they need to have a, uh, an operating system as close as their habits. Because the goal is to customize it most of the time. So for me, it makes sense to have different operating system for the agent images. But that, that's mm -hmm. just an opinion. While for the controller, when you use Docker for running Jenkins controller, it means you don't care the operating system of the the Jenkins controller. You care, you just want to run it so it works. And you care about the command line or tools that we provide as a project to customize plugins or anyone. But outside this, I don't see a reason for having multiple versions. For me, Ubuntu, eventually Alpine, but even that for me, it's absolutely the opposite spirit of packaging with Docker. In the case of the agent, it depends on the kind of tooling you have. So that that that's why. But right now, we don't have a lot of download of the Arc Linux, so we should uh, remove it. Globally, um, the statistics of downloads are only available to the administrator of the Docker Hub. 
And it could be interesting to see if we can have a way to extract and anonymize some of this data or see what can be public. Maybe they already provide some public metrics though that could help us to make decision without requiring an administrator to extract the CSV. Thank you, Damien. Okay, so so I'm I'm strongly in favor of deleting the Arc Linux uh, image anywhere, especially on on controllers, but agents as well. I just don't see it's I don't see the benefit of it. And even if it had hundreds of users, I don't think it's I don't think we can reasonably continue to maintain it. So now, in terms of where to announce it, in the past, what we've done is written a blog post. That that announced the deprecation yeah. of a of a particular container image. Uh, we eventually are going to have to deprecate the CentOS seven image, for instance, in part because yeah. I hate the Git version that's inside of it. Oh, uh, <laughs> it's there is no reason, there is no rush, no need for argument. CentOS seven is not supported anymore. Oh, oh by oh, no oh. one, by no community, no Red Hat since almost one year. Oh, really? Yes. Yeah, I can find the Red Hat. It's because they, the Red Hat shift their whole uh, downstream to upstream or they inverted their flow of uh, distribution. So either you go to Rocky Linux 8, but it has been deprecated. So it's, yeah. And yet, and yet Red Hat and Red Hat and Oracle are still shipping and supporting their Hat. version of 7, but it's not CentOS. Exactly. CentOS used to be the community and then Red Hat was built on top. Now it's the other way around. What they call CentOS stream is, is a downstream of their own proprietary distribution. And they yeah. shifted with the version 8 one year and a half, I think. So one year and a half if it was too soon because too much people were relying on CentOS 7. But now we can check the, the statistic as well. But CentOS yeah. 7, alas, the statistic won't be enough because CentOS 7, a lot of people have this old version running yeah. somewhere on a hidden machine, which is really scary. But <laughs> us, keep, uh, we, uh, uh, we should not delete the image, but stop having new version of the image and remove them from the source code. Yeah, okay, uh, now I totally vote for that, even if we don't vote. <laughs> Sorry, go uh, ahead, Mark. So I'm, I'm struggling with CentOS end of support because, for instance, on the Google Compute Engine page, they declare that, okay, in December 2020, the CentOS community, or maybe here, I'm going to post, I'll post this page and and uh, into the comments. And if you can open it into the chat, and if you can open that page, mm -hmm. let's see, here we go, get rid of the debris that they add. So here they say that CentOS 7's end of life is not until June 30, 2024. Okay. Now that's not CentOS community. Now, now CentOS 8 is already end of life. And so that's already something that we may want to, I wasn't aware of that. Mm -hmm. This tells me something new. And so if we've got a CentOS 8 image, it's already beyond end of life and we should have already dropped, dropped support for it. So this is a good excuse to declare uh, I, I'll have to check to see if we have any CentOS 8 images, but if we do, they are dead, right? Yep. Because CentOS 8 is no, not supported and we don't support things that the operating system vendor does not support. That's cool. And so, even okay. one year ago, it was already a pain in the neck to work with CentOS 7. For example, I had to recompile Git and curl uh, to get a recent version. Uh, with the packages, it was not possible to have something reliable and pretty recent. So, yeah. So that, that's true. Um... I, I thought that CentOS 7 was already deprecated, so that might have changed. But yes, uh, you, you are correct. We still have one year and seven months. So we have to keep using CentOS 7, or at least, yeah. The discussion is again, do we need, why someone needs CentOS 7 image of a controller? Right, right. And I think, I think that is the, Damien, I think you've got the best point of all there we should be telling people to get off CentOS 7 as a, a Docker controller because Docker abstracts it. They should pick a better operating system for their controller base image. CentOS 7 is a really lousy choice. <laughs> so so I, I think you're right. We want to, so maybe what we need to put here is an action item to um, revisit the 
platform support materials to be sure that no no containers are delivered with CentOS 8 or we we declare they're 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 going to be removed promptly because because CentOS 8 is not supported. Yep. And okay. additionally, it's a smell. If someone says, I absolutely need CentOS 7, I've seen two main cases. The first one is a, um, the security team need to scan whatever binary or distribution, and they try to add agent inside the image, which is an anti-pattern. They need the agent to run next on the same container engine and scan for the image binary or the container binaries while it's working. So that's the thing that we have to say, no, no, we don't want to support edge case. You don't need to add another process inside the image. You need the process next. It's a good practice in production. The second, uh, let's say major use case I saw is people extend the Jenkins image for most of the time because they use it as an agent as well as a controller. And that one must die. Right. That's that's a, that's an easy answer then. Stop doing that. I like that. <laughs> however, however, there are still legit use cases to take in account. Um, in order to use some plugins, such as the cloud plugins, you might need to install additional tools, such as the AWS command line, sure. Sure. Azure command line. But each of the tools can be installed on the Ubuntu image. Right. So for these cases, unless there is something really, really, really specific, meaning an edge case, either people should volunteer to maintain the image or we will drop it because that's the, that's the key. There is no problem of using and having all these images. If someone volunteers, if there are no volunteers, then we remove it because it's already hard to maintain Windows, Debian, and Alpine. It's already some work. Right. Nice. Oh, thank you. <laughs> well, Sorry, I was uh, like we opened the, how would we say, uh, a can of worms, a worm or cup, a lot of, a can of worms. Yeah. yeah. Pandora box. Uh, <laughs> anyhow, the next one is also for you, Damien. Uh, fixed Docker agent deployment issues. Um, may I say, okay, it's unintended. Done. No, it's, <laughs> yeah. That action item is done. Fixed. Finally. Congrats. So the last culprit was uh, a really, really, really old setup inside the GitHub repository. And I wasn't admin, I was only maintainer, so I wasn't able to sew these elements. And thanks to Tim Yacom who coked the issue, we add webhooks and SSH deploy keys to the Docker Hub. So even if we de disable the Docker Hub automatic builds, there were some Docker Cloud, which is the legacy Docker Hub build system, which is backed by Jenkins, by the way. And there were that ghost system that keep continuing receiving webhooks and building images and then pushing these images because it was allowed through the SSH key. Hmm. So by removing both SSH key and webhooks on the four repositories or ensuring they weren't present at all, we were able to cook the latest uh, deployment issue, I hope. On trusted CI, we haven't seen the, the, the error we saw one year ago where some builds that should not be built, but they were still triggered based on tags. So that one hasn't been seen since eight months. So we should be okay. So I consider that subject closed. Maybe it can reopen, but yeah. No, we cooked a valid, a valid culprit there. Nice. That was not easy. <laughs> Congrats for finishing solving this issue. Nice. Um, the next one is still for you, Damien. So uh, open issue for merging. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Yep. I, I didn't have time to work on it, so you can. No, no uh, problem. Move on. It's just making a status. That's okay. Um, I know so many things to do. <laughs> so little time. Uh, Something I should have told you maybe earlier. I discovered yesterday some tags for input agents still support the preview label for GDK 17. So we have to do something about that. Uh, yeah, yeah. I can see your face. I made the same one when I okay. discovered that. I even, don't on know the, even on the current images. Oh, wow. Ah, it was built five days ago with mm. those okay. tags. So, yeah. Okay, Pretty strange. Good. Okay, good at check. 
Yeah, me too. So we can pair on that if ever you want to. Uh, Stefan, I don't have the link. Don't know why. Open issue on Jenkins Infra App Desk about adding GDK 7, uh, 19 to CI Jenkins IO. Uh, that issue is almost done. It's uh, it's on the way of finishing some updately and uh, and some some following cool. issues, but uh, PR. But uh, the main one is is up and running. That's super cool. Um, may I ask you to modify the documentation later on with the right uh, link to the issue, please? Yes. Oh, thanks a lot. Uh, Damien, once again, it's you, oh, winner of the day. So monthly base OS update and autumn cleanup. That's what kept you. No, that's not the only thing that kept you busy, but you worked a lot on that uh, lately. Um, what can we say? You just yep. autumn cleanup. That's the kind of things we do. We like blowing the dead uh, leaves. Uh, it's the season. Yep. We already did it. Uh, so you can remove that sub item. It it's was not done anymore. Last... Sorry, we're done with the open action yep. items. That's what has been done now. Sorry, yep. I should have okay. changed the title, made a transition, Sorry. played a jingle or something. <laughs> um, Sorry, so it has been done. No, and no, it's no, it makes now. sense. So latest tag being overridden, as we said, that one is uh, closed now. Yep. It has been done. Uh, automatic tracking of remoting and GDK version. So we have we have released at least six version with that system and one GDK major version change. Uh, my, uh, no, so patch change. Uh, so that one is okay. Please note that automatic tracking of GDK is not implemented on the SSH agent yet, mm -hmm. but it's only in agent and inbound agent, which is already cool. Uh, yes, a lot of fixes as well. Uh, we broke some things. We had it yeah. also time zone support, which was missing on the agents. Uh, uh, yes, and there were also new contribution that was uh, waiting since one year on Windows images that are now supporting the Jenkins Java OPTS environment variable. Be careful uh, for the of uh, the quoting because PowerShell interpolate variables, but that allows you to fine tune and to specify GVM option to your agent process. If you want to limit the amount of memory on a Windows agent, for instance. Cool, thank you. Uh, now, experience with Windows 2022 working with Jenkins infrastructure to build these images. Is it you, Hervé? Or not? <laughs> I don't know. That's the topic Community. for the whole infra team. Uh, oh, cool! In December. Yeah. Okay, so I see. Before Christmas, as a gift. Oh, so kind of yours. <laughs> uh, experience with GDK nineteen and Terra two to and Terra four transition complete. I think we already saw that uh, in the last meeting that we could get rid of that i guess it yeah was... you can you can delete the item it's thanks a lot. It, it's done next stefan created the help desk ticket to not the progress on the java 19 support for developers so it's progressing which milestone is it for next week or i don't know that's that's the link i, I sent you for for uh, what I, uh, it's almost done. Okay. That's the same issue, in fact. Mm, that's why it seems something I already heard of. Uh, let me check where I am. I'm kind of lost in that big document. Um, yeah, so I can get rid of that because you already put the link earlier in the document. Now, the container image deprecation, why is it there? We should have put that in the open action item maybe i'll move that later on um we discussed a little bit the other day about that but we haven't done anything yet i guess or can you prove me wrong I, i've done nothing on this the Neither ideas the ideas are good <laughs> i like the ideas but i've done nothing on it okay so i'll move that in the open action items now, again, something for you, uh, Damien. I already know the answer, but container repository management for Jenkins agents. 
So the progress towards unifying repositories hasn't changed much lately, am I right? Uh, no, I need to write down. Um, so I've confirmed that uh, the Jenkins slash agent in uh, image is widely used by people using the Docker cloud plugin. Mm -hmm. um, they pr that plugin allows free mode for the agent, SSH, inbound, still named GNLP on that plugin because the plugin is marked as uh, to be adopted. And there is a third mode that seems really, really weird. We had an issue of a user that say it left a zombie process on the Linux machine. Mm -hmm. It seems that it start a container and attach to the container to get information. So that means it create a virtual TTY non-interactive to communicate between Jenkins and the container on the same machine. That's doesn't sound a good idea. And of course, it creates a lot of issues uh, in terms of lifecycle. But the, the documentation of that plugin recommend to use Jenkins dash agent for most of these use cases. Okay. So I've counted at least eight users who open issues in the past three weeks that said, oh, we are using Jenkins dash agent. And so I've started to communicate to this user if they were volunteer, two of them they realized free, including some uh, someone in IRC. They realized that the difference between Jenkins agents and Jenkins inbound is only a shell script. So right now I'm trying to to think about okay, Jenkins slash agent should be used as the let's say the common foundation for both inbound and SSH, which means there will be a major change that might break the use cases of people on Jenkins agent is. We should not add the remoting agent on the, uh, the foundational image because you don't want the remoting agent.jar file inside SSH. Yeah, yeah, yeah I see. It's um, only for inbound agent. So you, do I understand correctly? The actual Docker agent is not supposed to be used as is? Yep, exactly. Okay, um, and the script, the shell script, that is the main difference between the Docker agent and the inbound agent. What does it do? What does it contain? So it implements the logic that you path either parameters or environment variable to tell the inbound agent to which controller to connect, what is the secrets, and a few other uh, um, uh, things, such as the GDK to use for the agent process, uh, GDK, Gen, the Java OPTS to add if you want yep. to control the memory or GVM process. So it's only a way to make it easier. So any plugin such as the Kubernetes plugin or anyone starting a permanent agent with an automated system could control the behavior using environment variables that are the same and that are well documented. I see. Thank you. So um, the unifying of all these three repositories is a long-term job. It won't be done tomorrow, so don't expect to see one repo uh, as a 1st of January gift. That won't happen. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Damien. Now, we queried Java 11. Yeah, we're still talking about Java 11, even if GDK 17 works for Jenkins. So Mark, um, the build toolchain changes arrive in parent POM 4.53. Can you tell us more? Yeah, so uh, as part of the transition, Jenkins beginning with 2.357, uh, middle of 2022, switched to require Java 11 for Jenkins core. We did the same thing in 2.361.1 for the long-term support release. So that think of that as step two. The next steps then are to switch more and more of the tool chain so that it requires Java 11. Uh, big portions of the tool chain had to continue supporting Java 8 so that you could run or build and test plugins with older versions. Now the, the transition point, the tipping point is when Jenkins 2.361.1 or greater is your minimum version of Jenkins, you must use Java 11. And the parent POM 4.53, just released a few days ago, says that 
Now, if you use that parent POM, you must also use Jenkins 2.361.1 or newer as your minimum version. So is all that you just cited uh, reflected in the current documentation? I guess. It is, and that document oh, nice. that you just opened actually gives even more information about it. So it it describes it doesn't describe parent POM versions because that's yeah. a, a an implementation detail, but it does describe there are choices you can make and options when you choose a choice for your Jenkins recommended version. If you scroll up to the top of the page, we can look at some of the some of the guiding principles, right? So one of the guiding principles is building against recent Jenkins versions let you use recent core and recent APIs, right? So Java 11, for example. Uh, next line down, do not use versions that are no longer supported by the update center. The update center only tracks about 12 to 15 months worth of releases. If your minimum Jenkins version as a plugin is older than about 12 months, it's time to increase your Jenkins minimum version. And the reason for that is hiding in this fourth or fifth item down, prefer releases that re one more down, that one, few or no implied plugin dependencies. So the story here is that when we split a plugin out from core, in order to retain compatibility, we declare an implied dependency on the newly split plugin. Uh, that implied dependency means that any plugin dependent on a Jenkins version, Jenkins version before that release, before that Jenkins release, will now implicitly depend on the new split plugin. So in the example here, the WMI Windows Agent plugin has been deprecated. The technology on which it's based is shutting down and not available. It makes no sense for that plugin to continue. However, that means any plugin with a Jenkins minimum version of 1.576, I think it is, or older, has an implied dependency on that deprecated thing. Hmm. I see. Uh, now I understand the message I got lately with that WMI. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, it's clearer now. Thank you, Mark. Uh, now, Java 17 support in Jenkins, so that's part of what you're going to do, the Infra team, in December for your controllers. And maybe on CI Jenkins I.O. in January 2023. Is that correct? It's a good question. Eventually. Oh. Yeah, I wasn't, <laughs> maybe. I'm not sure we're going to have capacity to do that, Damien. Do you think that... For me, I would accept delaying this one in favor of the JFrog work and in favor in favor of the other work. I'm okay if Java 17 isn't on ci.jenkins.io for mm -hmm. several months yet, at least for me. I'm open to your opinions and the opinions of others, but I think the work on artifactory bandwidth is much more important. That That is true, but the effort to use GDK 17 is now uh, close to known Completion. because mm -hmm. the work that uh, first Hervé and then Stefan did on the agent contents we now control finally control the GDK version used for the agent which is different on all of our images of the default GDK the developer will want so the road for that one the, the last one has been fixed by Stefan today uh, so the effort should be uh, should not be changing our priorities However, um, for CI Jenkins IO, that could be interesting to wait for January. Um, what I had in mind was to start with at least infra CI, our internal machine, and use it for one, two week, and then start thinking about release CI Jenkins IO itself. That would be infra and weekly. Yes, and weekly, of course. The same. Okay, but that you. means that I will have to rebuild again the the whole four agents with uh, GDK 17 as the default launching one. Yes, true. Okay. I got Thank one you. last uh, new item. Yeah, go I'm ahead. Adding an issue. It's quite a critical one. 
it's been one year almost that the controller Docker images of Jenkins are not up to date, oh. both LTS and weekly images. I've added the issue that uh, that is associated to that problem. So whatever Jenkins, uh, uh, Jenkins slash Jenkins image of a controller on Windows that you pull, <coughs> whether it's Windows Server Core, Nano Server, whatever technician, you will always end with the weekly uh, two dot three five six, which is almost one year old. So if you are using Windows container and want to run Jenkins controller, which is already quite the edge case, then please uh, manifest yourself on that image. The person who raised the image volunteered to help. So I'm going to try to, to give information for that person to solve the issue. But that means uh, we need help on that part. Otherwise, that means maybe no one is using uh, that declination of the image. So that's raised the question, should we keep maintaining Windows image for Jenkins controller? I don't have any answer. I'm just raising the question for the, the health of the community. Yeah, and, and I think I've got an answer. I think we should propose to end end its life because, okay, it, Damien, it was June of 2022 when we released 2.356 and there's not been an update since then and no one has raised an issue except this individual user. Yep. Hmm. There are two users within, no, no, one, sorry. One. Okay, uh, do you have the numbers, the statistic for the times it had been downloaded or not? That's a good question. Same for the uh, Linux. Maybe uh, 20, gotta check. 22? <laughs> yeah, we have to check that. I'm opening to have a number, but let's not take a decision. Uh, yep. Right. Here. Uh, no, no, but I, I, it seems like it's an excuse, though, or it's a reason for us to investigate to see if, to answer the question, is this in image valuable enough for the community for us to continue maintaining it? Absolutely. When you want to try and Jenkins, I, oh. when you want to try Jenkins for the first time on Windows, is the tutorial are recommending to use the Docker image or no, no. Uh, it uh, and if please. and if we do recommend the Docker image, we recommend the Linux Docker image, not the Windows Docker container image. I haven't seen anything regarding Windows in the you know the startup tutorials and so on. It's of course it's telling us about Docker, you know. Too complicated way, by the way, uh, but uh, no, no reference to Windows. I, I know it's supposed. I was supposed to do something about that. We should have put that in the um, action <laughs> items, open action items. I was supposed to simplify the documentation, but it will come. Stay, <laughs> stay tuned. <laughs> Before I get retired, I promise. Uh, <laughs> oh, that was nice. Thanks a lot for this new item, Damien. Um. Does anyone have any other question or item to address? No? If not, that's perfect. Thanks a lot for your time, folks. It was nice to have all of you in this meeting. The recording should be available on YouTube from 24 to 48 hours in the base case. And see you. Mark, I think it's the last one of the year or no, we still have one platform SIG two weeks from now, I guess. So yeah, it's too early to say uh, Happy New Year and everyone. It will be next time. Maybe I had put um, a special hat for I Christmas guess. season. <laughs> well, but is but it? it is it is not too early to announce that the meeting that would be normally held on December thirtieth is cancelled. Yeah, it is. Which is reasonable to say people will be busy with the turkey or whatever uh, <laughs> instead of coming in here talking about. Docker. I don't know. Anyhow, once again, thanks a lot. See you next time, hopefully, and have a great rest of the week. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye.